So now here's where things differ a little bit as well when it comes to interfaces. When I want to uh, use an interface, when I want my class to inherit from an interface, I actually do not say extends. I actually state uh, something known as implements. Now here's where things kind of start to differ. Uh, extends. Extends obviously is my abstract class. I am only allowed one, I'm only allowed one super class. So mammal. I can't have uh, you know feline as well. Uh, I can only extend one class. However, I'm able to implement any number of interfaces. So you can think about that again as a, that idea of a blueprint. You know, uh, if we think about uh, cats for a second, you know, we have domestic cats and then we also have feral cats. So uh, instead of just having you know, them being pets, we could also implement, and how we would do that is we would implement this thing feral or something along the lines predator uh, outdoorsy pet uh, but that's how I would go about doing this is by stating implements now again because cat is a actual uh, class it's not an abstract class I have to implement from it because I extend from mammal I inherit make sound and I inherit sleep because I implement pet, I also inherit pet, and I inherit train. Now, I just threw on a little array list here, that way I could throw some tricks in there, but you can see this is how uh, I start to operate. Now, again, I said that I can implement any number of interfaces. Why would I want to do that? Now, pet, feral, okay, those are all right, but some of the other ones that we can do are some of the ones that are pre-built already for us in Java. Uh, think of it this way. The same way that we know that there is a date class, uh, date D equals new date, that we can just magically do. And the same thing with random. I can just magically do uh, these things and we don't think none the wiser to it, random. The same thing happens with interfaces. And it, again, an interface is more of a, a quality uh, that I'm saying. And so some of those ideas can be something like uh, something known as the comparable interface. Now, the comparable interface does exactly what it sounds like. Uh, first, it gives me the compare to method. Now, you're going to notice that I got this little E here. You have to specify this. So if I was to compare uh, cats, I would come in here and I would say uh, public class cat extends mammal implements, and I'm going to run out of room, implements pet comma and I'll come out down here for it comma comparable just like we did with the array list we have to say what it compares to now in this case we're dealing with a cat so I want to make my cat comparable to other cats uh, and then again I now have this compare to method that I can look at and I can say anything I want. Okay, does uh, my cat, is my cat better than your cat? Um, is my cat older than your cat? Whatever means that I want to specify as kind of the uh, compare to algorithm. Now, how it should operate, since it is a return type of int, how compare to works is it's basically expecting, you know, this is something pre built by Java, so it's expecting. Uh, negative one if it's less than, zero if it's equal to, and one if it's greater than. This will become uh, very beneficial in a second. Uh, but instead of cats, let's just kind of use something that has a physical uh, idea to it. Something like date. Again, we've talked about the date class uh, just a second ago. But 
if I'm looking at something like a date, well, I've got uh, 2014 and 2013. Which one is greater than? Well, what'll happen is it'll look at this and it'll say that, oh, well, you know, this day happened before this day. So this is going to be less than. What this is going to then produce is negative one. All right, why would I want to do this? Again, that negative one, that's gonna be beneficial because if you remember, you might have seen this kind of thing, something called java.utils dot arrays, uh oh, the arrays class dot sort. And that normally will take an uh, array of something, it doesn't know what, and it will sort it. Now we got lucky, we were using uh, integers uh, or primitive data types when we were working on it in the past, when we learned about uh, uh, you know, the arrays dot sort uh, technique. But what about our now complex data types. We're talking about, again, dates here. So how would I do this? Well, guess what? If I happen to have uh, a bunch of complex data types and I want to use something like sort, it will automatically go in and do the compare to and say, well, in this case, more cities, uh, Wilmington, uh, that's a W. Well, compared to uh, Surf City, Surf City comes before Wilmington. Wilmington, in this case, it would uh, do the compare to, compare to Wilmington, Surf City. This is going to produce a positive one because Wilmington should come after Surf City. And then Java, because Java has this going on in the background, is going to sort of build that up. It's going to swap these around as necessary until finally it is properly sorted, at which point when I run through this print statement, what I will see is Castlehane, Hampstead, Ogden, Surf City, Wilmington.